Hey tribe, I just want to talk real quick about one of the events that recently got brought up, at least from my perspective. So standing power throw, this is such an interesting event. So basically the concept of the event is dependent upon current, the current scoring standards, dependent upon your gender and age bracket, you have to throw a 10 pound weighted ball overhead for a given distance. So I do see a lot of people struggle with this event and I recently instructed an hour long session on this particular event. And I wanna talk about some critical pieces that we don't think about in this event. A lot of people think, well, you know, it's just a technique thing. You just need to get the technique down. Or a lot of people say, I've, I've heard this one pretty often, Oh yeah, uh, just you've got to get the ball to a certain point and then it'll hit the right trajectory to go overhead. So release and also technique. But one thing I think a lot of people are missing the mark on is the strength in our hips to really propel that ball forward. So if you're thinking about say heaving, a heavy sack. So let's say you had a, a couple of a sack of groceries and you're trying to get it into the backside of your car or your truck. And let's say it's super heavy because you decided to buy 20 pounds of potatoes that day. Or let's say you went to the hardware store and now you're getting a sack of concrete. I want to talk about when you have to heave it out of a cart, we all, the propensity is to kind of use our hips to get it up into the bed of a truck, into the back of a car. And so I just wanna talk real quick about that being your body's natural way to utilize the best muscle groups to get that heavy weight where it needs to go. Same concept for the ball toss, same concept for the standing power throw. You are going to use your hips, your glutes, your legs, to drive that ball overhead and propel it overhead. All right, Tribe, let's talk about a few things that really might help you out with this train up for the standing power throw. I'm gonna talk about kettlebell swings, and I know a lot of people don't really do kettlebell swings. I know there's people who maybe go to a gym and maybe they don't do kettlebell swings, but these are pretty simple to do. And actually you can buy a kettlebell for not super expensive. So I'm gonna grab a kettlebell real quick. All right, so let's talk kettlebell swing real quick. So I have my kettlebell here. And there's a couple of, there's several different ways to do this, but I'm gonna show you two. So I'm going to take my kettlebell and one of the ways, and I, I don't mean any offense by this. So if you are Russian, please don't take any offense to this. So a Russian kettlebell swing, I'm not coming up all the way, but notice that I am engaging all the lower body muscle groups and I'm squeezing my butt up at the top, right? And it, that it is what's propelling this kettlebell to swing up. I'll show you with one hand so you can just see that I really am not using my arms at all for this. So my arms are really just super relaxed. And what is propelling the kettlebell upward is me driving with my hips, with my glutes, and I am propelling that kettlebell to come up. The other way to do this is to do what we call American style kettlebell swings. So you're gonna take your kettlebell and it's gonna swing all the way up. But really, again, my arms are super relaxed. I'm not doing anything with my arms. This is all hip drive. Okay. So again, we're thinking about that critical hip drive 
And while you're doing these exercises, I highly, highly recommend you pay attention. Where am I getting the most hip drive? Where, so there are some positions where I see people really having to kind of use a little bit of their upper body to kind of get that kettlebell that last little way. But think about where do I need to be to really get the most hip drive so that it's propelling that kettlebell up. So that should transfer over to the standing power throw. When you're thinking about grabbing that ball, you get to practice swing. Think about where that, that ball needs to be. Same concept with the kettlebell. You should be training that over and over because repetitions equals practice. So think about getting that kettlebell into the right position where your glutes, your legs, your hips are driving that weight overhead. All right, tribe. So last little thing about kettlebells. A lot of people say, well, I don't know what weight I should be at. You know, find a gym. A lot of gyms do have what's called a one day pass. And most gyms have kettlebells in varying weights. So you can go visit a gym and just go try out the different weights. Start low. I would say start off maybe with a 15 pounder if you've never done these before. And go up in increments of five and see how they feel. You only need to do a few repetitions, maybe do five repetitions as you work your way up the weight sets. And then when you find a good solid weight, so for example, for me, a 45 pounder or a 40 pound kettlebell, maybe even a 50 pounder would be sufficient for my normal training workout. But if I'm doing high repetition, high volume, you know, I might think about bumping down to like a 35 or a 40. So keep those things in mind, but that's just over time, training, tracking, and logging that stuff. So that's how I know where my weights are roughly at. And not, you're not gonna feel 100% every day. So don't go off the weights that you said one day, oh, you know what? I was able to do a 55 pound kettlebell or a 75 pound kettlebell. Gosh, I should be able to do that again next week. Here's the deal. We feel different every day, depending upon our sleep, hydration levels, stress, food, all that stuff. So you've got to take that into account when you go into a workout, same concept. I hope this stuff helps you guys on your standing power throw event. Keep training your hips, keep training your glutes, and get up from your desks every now and again, every day. Good luck, tribe.